and you know I love bad NFT news. <laughs> yeah. you, you know I can't get enough, especially when it's celebrity involved bad NFT news. I just I just think there's something so dirty about what's going on in this NFT industry. But so Seth Green, he owns these NFTs, right? He owns uh, these uh, Bored Ape Yacht Club NFTs. That's one of them. The sad monkey with the angel ring over its head. The halo. That's Harambe? one. Of, that's not, I, 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 shout outs to Harambe, by the way. May he rest in peace. Dicks out. Uh, uh, dicks out. Dicks out. 100%. Uh, 24-7, actually. Uh, but so Seth Green got caught in a phishing scam. He got fished, which is uh, when you inadvertently... Uh, give sensitive information to somebody with ulterior motives, and then they they well they jack your shit. <laughs> you know that's that's what their choice of the matter is. So like we don't know the exact specifics of how he did, but in a phishing scam, he gave a portion of his data up, and somebody was able to uh, finagle four. NFTs out of his NFT collection. And uh, they put him back up on the open market and they were able to sell sell it. One of them, somebody paid $200,000 for. It was actually for, I think it was for this guy right here. Jesus Christ. Somebody paid $200,000 for. Which by the way, Seth, if you need it, I will text you this photo that I have on the screen right now. I'll, I'll just send this to you. I'll do that for $700 straight up. If that's appealing to you, if you want to save some cash, that might be the way to go. Now, And will we have ownership of that photo? Uh, yeah, sure. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so that's the problem here, Hot Dog, that, uh, that with the Bored Ape NFTs, which is like all the rage, these are the ones that like a few months ago, we played that dystopian, terrifying clip of Paris Hilton and Jimmy Fallon talking about it. I got one too. Yeah, I think this looks like me. Like, what? Uh. What? So the Bored Apes are like the, the big celebrity craze and uh, the market's jacked up like crazy on them. Like, the, the, this is what goes for big money right now. $200,000, as I just said. When you buy them, and, and this changes per NFT, but when you buy a Bored Ape in the sort of uh, 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 whatever, the fine print, you do also own the commercial rights to the IP. So you can use these board ape characters that you buy for commercial purposes. For this specifically, that's not an across the board NFT bylaw. That's can you just make a movie you, based on your yes, board ape. You absolutely can. You can do that. You can sell posters. You can do whatever you want. You can commercially use the IP of that board ape. So what Seth Green was doing was he was developing an animated show based on his NFT characters. So he had bought these NFT characters and he's like, I'm going to, I'm going to make this animated TV show and it's going to be great. I'm going to, you know, put voices behind these characters. It's going to be fantastic. He denies this because he's saying that this whole thing is illegal. Unfortunately, the whole point of blockchains, NFTs, cryptocurrency is that governments aren't supposed to be involved in any of it. That's the entire point that you're taking out that overriding body and putting the power back in to the hands of the people. But if the power is in the hands of the people and the people get fished, you're fucked. So Seth Green's project is on hold right now because he thinks that a hacker might have stolen the IP to the character that he was going to use on his show. He tweeted out, he found the guy who bought this NFT from him and tweeted to him like, yo, let me get that NFT back because it is mine. I Don't make me take you to my court. My board ape. That's my board ape. Don't make me take you to court. As we've talked about hot dog. There ain't a judge in this country who knows fuck all about NFTs. Like that's no, going you do not to be, want to take mm -mm. any of that to court. Mm -mm. It's going to be embarrassing because the judge, even if you're right, the judge is going to be like, well, I just found this on Google Images. I don't understand what your problem is. <laughs> <laughs> and if the bylaws say the owner of the NFT owns the IP for it and the commercial rights for it, 
and somebody steals it from you and then somebody else buys it from the person who stole it from you, then technically all you have to do is look at the blockchain, right? All you have to do is look at what makes NFTs so great, which is undeniable ownership. And undeniable ownership is now residing with somebody who is not Seth Green, who paid $200,000 for it, which means it's not like, you know, he paid 75 bucks to a hacker and he's like, okay, Seth, you can have your shit back. I don't care if you're Elon Musk. I don't care how rich you are. If you spend $200,000 on a PDF on, or, or, or a JPEG or whatever it is, you're not just giving that back to Seth Green. At minimum, you're like, all right, Seth, you can have it back at what I paid for it. So it's, Seth's going to be at 200000 in the hole, at least, unless the guy wants to make a profit, which he probably does, or he wants to hold it, which he might, unless a judge can somehow declare that this is like when the bank puts money in your account by mistake and you spend it, now you owe that money. Now, that would also imply that the guy bought it knowing it was stolen. Because if you buy something knowing it's stolen, typically, you know, if it's a traditional property, you're on the hook for it, right? Like mm -hmm. if you if you buy a toaster and you know the toaster is stolen, a judge can take that away from you and you're not getting your money back because you're a fucking asshole for buying stolen property. What if you did it now? Exactly. How does the law work? I think that that's why Seth Green is now tweeting about it. Because he's like, bro, I tweeted about it. It's a news story. Now everybody knows. Now nobody else can buy my NFTs that were stolen from me because I gave somebody the password because I thought they were somebody else because they emailed me. Like, it's so... What do you think they were emailing, trying to fish? Yeah, I mean, how do you... How do you go, like... Like, uh, I mean, you know one of those questions when, you, when you're... Uh... When you're putting like the security questions, like who was your best friend in, <laughs> in middle school? Yeah. Hey, Seth, just curious. <laughs> Seth, I'm doing a search. It was probably one of those Facebook things where it's like, uh, hey, if you're my real friend, answer these questions. And it's yeah. all your security questions. <laughs> what is your grandmother's maiden name? I mean, it would literally be like I have a $200,000 painting. And I was like, Seth, I don't really know you. Can I keep the painting in my house? I promise I won't move. And he was like, yeah, sure. And then you just move. <laughs> like, like, why did you do that? I don't know. I don't know. He said he wouldn't move. He specifically said he would not move. And then he moved. Well, I got a question. Uh, why can't Seth just make an animated show with another monkey? Because it'll look like an asshole. People will know that's not the right monkey, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares about this show anymore. <laughs> monkey with a t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, couldn't you just draw a monkey, get somebody to draw a monkey that looks strikingly similar to a Bored Ape Yacht Club NFT? There's a lot of monkey drawers out there. But it's all hype, dude. It's there. Everything is hype. Every, it's all predicated on hype to the point where you're actually creating a show where the reason that viewers care about the characters is based on internet hype. And so if you don't have internet hype, I guess you don't have your show. An NFT show. Plus it's embarrassing too. If he has to like change the color of the shirt and people like everybody watching that, it's going to be like a cautionish chair. Everybody watching that is going to be like, you know, he's wearing a red shirt because stupid got fished. <laughs> <laughs> like you don't want that energy, man. No. Yeah. Just turn like on, like, turn on two FA, boy. Seth. Turn on two FA. If you're going to be in this, if you're going to be in this thing, you know, and that's what like, People who are at risk of getting fished and who don't have 2FA turned on and who get hacked and get their passwords stolen. Like this crypto world is not for you. That's why I'm not, that's why I'm not, you know, I have a little bit of Bitcoin, unfortunately. I wish I didn't. The minute I break even on it, I'm selling it because it's not for me. I'm not for, this world is not for me. But I don't see him getting that $200,000 NFT back. No, nah, that boy got finessed. He got finessed. And, and Seth, Green, Seth Green's an old guy. He doesn't seem like it, but he's an old guy. He's been around for a minute. He's been around for a minute. And I think that there are more people laughing right now than want to see the NFT show. And that sucks for him. Not for us. It sounds awful. The NFT sounds show? Like awful or... premise for a show. Okay. <laughs> okay. So 
Your takeaway is not like, ah, oh, poor Seth. He got his property stolen. You're taking away. Your takeaway is that sounds like a dumb show. Yeah. My biggest takeaway is why the fuck would you need an NFT to make a, a, a show about a monkey? That's true. The animated S monkey. The Simpsons are not NFTs and that show rules, or at least it did for like the first 12 seasons. Also, where, where are people coming up with $200,000 for just shit like this? There's just some money laundering thing going on. Yeah. That's the other thing is that nobody's going to feel sympathy for you uh based on this purchase like like if i got a rolex right and i got my rolex stolen and i didn't have insurance on the rolex i probably wouldn't publicly announce like oh i want some sympathy because i got my rolex stolen because most people would be like hey dick don't spend ten thousand dollars on a watch you stupid idiot right <laughs> like and i'd go that's a strong argument that's a that's 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 a strong one for me to come back on. Next time I'll just collect the insurance and keep my mouth shut. At least that's ten thousand dollars and it's tangible. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're not you don't have to explain what is this like. What I don't. Uh, oh, like, this is a photo of a Rolex. Right. Like nobody would like if I go like I this is a this is a Rolex. People wouldn't be like, what's the difference between a Rolex and the clock that's on a wall? No, you know, people, people, under, people understand. People get it. If I told, went to a judge, I was like, judge, that guy stole my Rolex. The judge would be like, give it back to him. I'm sending you to jail. <laughs> if I went, judge, that guy, he took my uh, token that wasn't fungible. The judge would be like, <laughs> what? What? What did you just say to me? What the hell are you talking about?